Hello and happy Wax on Wednesdays. Today I'm going to be working on two 8x8 cradle boards and just using some of my favorite colors. I've got some RNF paint sticks here and also some uh, Winsor Newton oil paints which I've left out overnight on a paper towel and mixed up a couple of uh, colors that I might like. And of course I'm using my very one of my very favorite colors which is indigo in the RNF oil stick and some of my other favorites and just sort of playing around with my favorite colors and see what's going to happen here and I really have no um, no game plan here I'm just I've been studying other things lately and sometimes it's just a fun release to uh, just play around with color and pattern and see what's going to happen so I've just got these two boards out to play I've already prepped them with four or five layers of white encaustic medium fused flat in between every single layer. So these boards are ready to go and ready to do whatever I would like to on them. And of course, I'm going to fuse um, additional layers here of, um, of the oil stick that I add. I'm going to fuse it into the wax. And of course, any additional layers of encaustic I add, I'm always going to fuse after every single layer. And this is, it's fun to just sort of play on a, a smooth surface and play around with the colors. You can mix those colors right there on your encaustic surface. So um, the color that you use doesn't need, have to, of course, necessarily be the one that you come out with. You can mix them right there as you go and they blend just beautifully. Um, oil sticks, oil paint, that's, um, if you leave it out on a paper towel, the paper towel will soak up that excess linseed that we really don't need when we're working in caustic. Uh, we don't need that excess linseed oil and it also um, people often ask why and it's because it um, prohibits the wax from setting up properly. Uh, so um, if there's too much linseed oil in the paint um, the wax won't set up properly and um, as quickly as it should and so uh, if you leave that oil paint out on a paper towel it will soak up that ex the extra oils and you can go ahead and use it just like you would any of the oil sticks and that's why the oil sticks again are so um, are so wonderful to work with in, when in, in caustic is because they don't have all those excess oils and they're just sort of ready to roll and there's several brands that you can use of oil stick there's um, RNF, Shava, Winsor Newton makes an oil an oil bar they call it. There's several brands out there. If you have any brands that I didn't mention that you've been using of oil stick, please uh, list the comment in the comment below because we'd love to know. We always love uh, trying out new um, products with encaustic and new um, new colorants. So if you are using currently, uh, maybe in your own country, or maybe you found um, a company that's putting out an oil stick and uh, we haven't discussed it here on Wax on Wednesdays yet, please leave a comment and below and share with us what that um, oil stick is and how you like it. Uh, here I'm just taking a brush. I usually use my fingers when I'm playing um, with the color and I go right back, but I always have a, a nice uh, clean stiff brush handy just in case. And again, mixing these colors, just really playing around with, um, with color. And these are just two boards to find out what it is um, that I like today and maybe a palette that I'd like to go with today. And as I was playing with these, I decided it would be fun to work with some texture, a little challenge. Um, I love working in landscapes on flat boards uh, with oil stick and pan pastel, and I do it pretty often even here on Wax on Wednesday. So I thought it would be fun to work with some texture and see how that goes. So I'm adding texture in a couple different ways. There's just not one way to dry brush texture onto a board, you can make it have so many different effects. There's so many possibilities there when adding dry brush check texture. Once you get used to adding texture with a dry brush or an almost dry brush with your encaustic wax, you can really manipulate that into several different or many different uh, forms and textures and really get into, um, just into the fun of that, into exploring um, different textures that you can add on your surface depending on how wet your brush is, how the angle that you have your brush in, the type of brush that you're using. I always use uh, just a cheap chip brush I find brings the most texture but you're going to get a different texture um, if you use a more expensive encaustic brush 
versus a cheap chip brush versus another um, sort of um, natural hair brush. Maybe um, a lot of times I will take these chip cheap chip brushes and uh, cut them into shorter bristles and that'll give a different effect as well. So that's a fun tip. Um, something fun to try, especially on cheap brushes, is to uh, play around and you know get the scissors and cut your bristles and see what happens. And it's just fun to, to play around and see what dry brush texture, what accretion you can build up uh, with different, um, different wetness of your brush and different angles of your brush. And then play around with your color over that texture. So maybe you want to keep it uh, the color that you added. Maybe you want to really work it in there, uh, which your fingers are your best tool to just work that in and if you don't like it and you don't you find out gosh I, I don't like that color over my texture don't worry you can just get a paper towel and some vegetable oil or um, really any type of oil and uh, wipe it right back off sometimes a baby wipe is um, good just to wipe that oil stick off if you haven't fused it in yet you can uh, wipe it back off with just a baby wipe, but just a little bit of vegetable oil and a soft cloth and it'll take it right off. So um, here I'm fusing again, every single layer I add, I'm fusing it in, I'm fusing that colorant in, I'm fusing extra wax in, um, fusing, 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 so every single layer adheres to the previous layer. And this one I'm adding, I've already fused my first layer of color in on the second board, and I'm adding another layer of color. Okay, and after I play around with these base layers of color, I'm going to fuse this all in really well and then begin to add and build some more texture on both of these pieces in some uh, different ways. I'm just trying to get some something different going on, something different to play around with and uh, build on. And of course, I can continue to add more color and um, I can change it up and add uh, different color mediums to this as well but here I'm just got a chip brush very 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 dry and to do this I hold the brush out of the wax this is clear uh, clear medium right now this is not white but it's clear and this is um, the drier the brush the more the brush stroke so this has got some great uh, texture to it it's really showing all those brush strokes and by going different directions I've got this wonderful uh, pattern going and you can see those lines just long lines almost like a really fine spaghetti looking texture and I really like that that's uh, an extremely dry 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 brush and you know just wait just be patient and wait for almost depending on how uh, warm your wax is the brush that and how long the brush has been in your wax but leave it out for 30 seconds and try it. Leave it out for a minute and try it. Experiment and explore with how long it takes your brush to dry. Uh, so if you've never done the accretion method before, uh, just really explore. You can do it on a sample board, you know, get a piece of wood out and practice on it first before you do it on your painter painted board if you want to just kind of see. But these are just practice boards and it's fun to just explore on these, the ones that I'm working on. And you just see how long it takes, um, the different effects that you can create. So this is very little wax on the brush and long, long strokes as opposed to this middle section which has more wax on it and the brush is a little bit wetter. So it's more of a mottled effect. And of course you can build on that by just going back and forth with a very, very dry brush. You can build on that center section and really get some deep um, nooks and crannies and texture going. And here I'm adding more oil stick into the crevices of this texture because once you've added the texture, you don't have to stop. Fuse it just to a very, very light shine. Um, when you're fusing texture and you want to keep your texture, you want to retain that texture in your piece, fuse it just until it comes to a shine or to a glisten. And that's fused. You don't have to um, continue to, you know, and lose all of that great texture. You might lose a tiny, tiny, tiny bit um, as you get used to it, but you can retain most of it by just going by the rule when it comes to a shine, remove the heat, and also um, good to use, you know, a torch that has 
a low setting on it. I like when I'm using a torch, I use my Iwatani because I can control that flame so well. And if I'm using a heat gun, I make sure it's one that has a low setting on it and hold it a little bit farther away so I'm not fusing out all that great texture. And here I'm just angling my brush in different ways and building, building, building on all this texture all around the board. And both of these brushes, one is dipped in clear and the other one's dipped in white, but they're both the same type of chip brush. So they're basically the essentially the same brush and I'm using it in different ways to achieve different types of texture all on the same board. So there's a lot going on on this board in different, um, completely different patterns, different textures. Uh, you've got some lines, some model effects, some long, some long uh, spaghetti-like texture. Uh, and so I, now I'm going to work on the next board and do um, something different. This is again, I'm starting with clear on this and you can start with white or clear depending on your composition and, and what you want. You can always color either one, the white or the clear. You can color it with uh, pan pastels or oil sticks or whatever you're working with. And just watching this video, it looks like a really fast process, but of course I've got it really sped up and uh, as I go because otherwise it would be completely boring to watch this texture build up and build up and build up. But I'm fusing in between every single layer and just to a shine as I build up this texture. So every time I go over the whole board, I'm going to fuse it and it's taking several layers to build this up. So it takes some time, a little patience. It's not just done in this 10-15 minute video. It takes quite a while to uh, get your you know brush dry and brush all this texture. And of course, every time your brush completely dries out, you have to dip it again and wait for it to dry for a minute. So it takes a little while to build up these layers, but it's so uh, worth it to get this great texture going and so fun to uh, explore all these different ways that you can add texture and uh, um, use a board that you just have just for texture and just really explore the different things that you can achieve. And then of course you have that um, arsenal, that library of texture that you can work with on larger pieces. So it's really good to fun to explore on smaller boards and just see what is possible. And here I'm going to add some pan pastel, I've fused it and I've let it set out for a little while. So this is set up and set out, out for a little while before I went ahead and add added these pan pastels so it doesn't all you know lump together in a big mess. So um, everything's all fused in, it's set up, I'm going to go ahead and start uh, refining my color with some pan pastels and a makeup sponge and really fun to add some softer, finer layers with uh, with the pan pastels over top all of this great texture. And again, if I don't like an area, I can always take a paper towel and some vegetable oil and wipe it back off. Still fusing, fusing that pan pastel into the wax too. You want everything fused in, everything incorporated into your encaustic layers. So I really continue to play with this, uh, both using the pan pastels and the oil sticks, uh, it took you know, all day to do um, these going back and forth, coming back to these boards, letting it set up a little while, letting them rest for a while, and then coming back and uh, and adding some more pigment to them. So played around quite a bit, and I might not, they might not be even uh, done yet. I might go in back in in a few days. There might be a part two. But I'm really excited about all of the different looks that were achieved with the same brush on these boards, uh, completely different textures, and texture can be such a wonderful tool for encaustic, so it's really worthwhile to explore all of the different um, effects that you can achieve through textures. So I hope you had a great time with this, and we will see you next Wednesday. Happy Wax on Wednesdays.